Hello students, today in this video we are going to discuss poetic devices of poem number 4, A Thing of Beauty. So in this poem, John Keats uh, has written that something which, is, which has a real beauty goes on providing us joy forever. If anything is really beautiful, the more we view it, it more, uh, the more beautiful it appears as our increased understanding reveals newer forms. And a beautiful things never a beautiful thing can never be nothing because it never fades. It worth makes it immortal. So uh, let's discuss poetic devices used in stanza number one. A thing of beauty is a joy forever. Its loveliness increases. It will never pass into nothingness, but will keep a bar quiet for us and a sleep full of sweet dreams and health and quiet, breath, uh, and quiet breathing. So here in this stanza, you can see the poetic devices. But before poetic devices, we have to discuss the rhyming scheme of the poem. And uh, how we uh, can see the rhyming scheme of the poem, you have to locate the last words of the poem. So in first poem, first line, we can see the word is ending with forever, then never, then keep and the sleep, then health and then uh, and then breathing, right? So the words which are ending with the same like forever and never, we have given them A, right? And the words which are ending with like the sound keep and sleep, when we pronounce the spelling ends with the same uh, you know pronunciation is same so keep sleep forever never and the last one is breathing that is different so here we will give this to c so by this the rhyming scheme would be a a b b c of this poetic device so like this you can locate the poetic uh, the rhyming scheme in the poem the next one is alliteration and alliteration is what? It is the use of consonant sound at the start of two or more than two words which are close in series. So here we can see a thing of beauty is a joy forever. It loveliness increases. It will never pass into nothingness. What will keep war quiet for us in a sleep. Sleep full of sweet dreams, sweet dreams and health and quiet breathing. So here you can see these words S in the starting here and S in the starting of sweet. So here these are, uh, here in these words alliteration is being used. Okay. Next one is when we talk about the third one, the third poetic device used here is metaphor. And metaphor is what? Uh, it, when we compared the uh, things okay without using the words like and as so here in boar quiet boar quiet is what the shade we have seen in the explanation video uh, that uh, this boar quiet is the shade of the trees or the shade of the nature right so this boar quiet is calmness of the boar is compared to calming effect of the beautiful thing so that's why it is compared as uh, it is given as uh, metaphor right because the calmness of boar the shade is affecting the beautiful things now if we talk about stanza number two so stanza number two is therefore on every morrow are we reading a flowery band to bind us to the earth spite of despondence on the human inhuman dearth of noble natures of the gloomy days of all unhealthy and uh, uh, and over darkened ways made for our searchings yes in spite of all some shape of beauty moves away the pal from our dark spirits so here if you will see the first poetic device used is anaphora anaphora is what Anaphora is use of the same word in two consecutive lines. So here, if we'll, if we'll see here, after the punctuation mark, we can also see off is here, off is here, off is here, and off is here. Okay, so if the same word is using in the starting of the consecutive lines, that is called anaphora. It may happen that sometime it is one word only. It may happen that it is a phrase only, means the group of words only, right? So that is what, if the repetition 
of the same word in the starting of the conjunctive line is or uh, is there so that is called anaphora so that's why of of and uh, of of you can see here and moreover you will see deeply so here of the of the right of the of the so you can do this also of the and of the and of of also clear next one is alliteration so alliteration is what alliteration is again use of consonant sound at the start of two words which are close in the series so here uh, in this line we will in this second line a flurry band to bind it is band and bind both are having b and b right and it is giving b sound b sound actually in the starting so that is uh, that is what here alliteration and one more is the like noble natures so here n sound is being repeated that is also alliteration right so next one is uh, next next poetic device used in stanza number 2 is metaphor metaphor is where uh, when it is given that we are reading a flurry band reading a flurry band so here so here in this first line we can say therefore on every morrow we are reading a flurry band so this reading a flurry band is the beautiful thing of our life which bind us to the earth so actually that is a connection actually in a uh, in a way it's a comparison uh, between uh, the reading uh, the the band and the earth right so it is comparison between like we use Uh, ropes to bind something right to not something but here it is what the flurry band which is binding us for to the earth uh, so here that's why we are comparing this uh, comparing this and this is what meta for so let's see the next one in stanza number 3 such the sun the moon trees and uh, trees old and young sprouting the shady moon for simple sheep and such are daffodils with the green world they live in and clear rills that for them a cooling covert make against the hot season the mid forest break so here what here uh, you must have noticed one word is uh, earlier too like here this word gaze against is given but actually that is what against so this is the license given to the uh, actually the poet that to create a rhyming scheme he can use such type of words so first let's talk about the poetic devices used in stanza number 3 here that is first one is alliteration and if we'll talk about sprouting a shady boon so here s sound is being repeated s sound i am talking about s sound is being repeated in sprouting shady simple sheep and uh, uh, in cooling covert in cooling covert so c sound is being repeated here right so this is what alliteration in all of the uh, group of the words sprouting a shady boon simple sheep cooling covert clear so this c sound in cooling covert s sound is simple sheep and s sound also again in uh, sprouting shady boon so here you have to Uh, use this as alliteration next we will talk about the next poetic device that is uh, imagery here imagery is what imagery is uh, when we can see the trees giving us the shade t trees giving us shade so that you know that shade comes into our minds that imagery is what imagination which we feel in our mind the the picture which we uh, make in our mind that's called imagery and that may that is depend on our uh, all sense organs this video uh, you can see in that video of poetic devices i have given example and explained there so imagery is what trees giving shades sprouting shady boon growing process of daffodils so that is also imagery right so daffodil with the green word they can live clean river streams that is clear uh, rills clear small rivers so that is also us that is uh, that all are imagineries okay 
when the poet is saying all this so we can imagine those things in our mind we can create the pictures of these things in our mind so these are called imagery the last one is antithesis here now antithesis is what opposite word placed together just together like old and young here it is given so when the two poet uh, opposite words like old opposite word is what young so when the opposite words are given to you and placed together so that is called antithesis see students don't get confused between oxymoron and antithesis so i will tell you the difference also what is antithesis and what is oxymoron antithesis are the words which are placed together okay and let's see this is written here the an oxymoron is a phrase that uses two contradicting or opposite ideas while an antithesis is a device that present two contrasting ideas in a sentence but not in the same phrase okay so that is called that is the difference between both of them don't get confused here now stanza number 4 Stanza number four is rich with the sprinkling of fair musk rose blooms, and such too is grandeur of the dooms we have imagined for the mighty dead, all lovely tales that we have heard or read, an endless fountain of immortal drink pouring onto us from the heavens brink. So here. first poetic device used in the stanza is alliteration and that is used in have heard have heard here have heard so here h sound is being repeated in this have heard so this is what alliteration second one is what second poetic device used in this is metaphor when we talk about the immortal drink which is pouring us uh, unto us from the heavens brink the so immortal drink is what the drink which came from heaven right so it is beautiful object of the nature and forever like a never ending portion of a drink so here we are comparing these things uh without using words like and as so this is what immortal drink is what immortal drink is meta for here next one uh and the last poetic device again is the rhyming scheme so if you will see the rhyming scheme is same like if you will see here blooms dooms means a a dead red b b drink drink so here it is c c okay so a a b b c c is the uh, poet is the rhyming scheme of this fourth stanza here now if we will talk about the imagery and inversion so what's the difference between them imagery i'll told you that is a create uh, that creating a sensory effect of beautiful things lined up in a string right which we can see we, the picture of those things we can create in our mind so that is called imagery second thing is inversion so it is what normal order of words is reversed are we reading a flowery van so that is called inversion here so uh, now let's discuss this was all about the question uh, this was all about the poetic devices now i want you to discuss some of the important questions uh, like list the things of beauty mentioned in the poem so which are the things uh, the poet john keats has mentioned as beautiful the sun the moon young and old shady trees beautiful daffodil flowers streams of water running for cool water Spar sparkling forest ferns rich with fragrant and musk roses also and the last one he has compared not only the beautiful thing in the nature but he has compared the tales of the great royal ancestors who sacrificed their lives in the war also so he has compared those also the lives of those uh, those uh, uh, ancestors uh, the those warriors as beauty also next is list the things that cause suffering and the pain so what he has uh, mentioned here hopelessness that he told despondence lack of novel men that is that he told in hum in human dearth of uh, human natures next he told about the ill health unhappiness gloom and darkness so all these things are he mentioned are giving us suffering and the pain 
Next, what does the line therefore are we writing a flurry when to bind us to the earth suggest to you? What, so what is the meaning of you? So despite experiencing all the happiness, unhappiness every morning, we weave a beautiful wreaths to bind us together with the earth. We wake up early in the morning and start whatever is whatever is our daily routine. Okay, so that is what therefore we are writing a flurry when because we want to enjoy the nature. Next one is question number four here. What makes human being lo beings love life in spite of troubles and sufferings? So here, despite despondency and gloominess in our life, we lo love our life because all the things of beauty remove the sufferings and the bring uh, they bring joy to us. Next one is why is grandeur associated with the mighty dead? So the great royal ancestors might are the mighty dead will always be remembered because of their noble deeds and splendid actions. The sacrifice, inspiration and the brilliance grandeur will be always the fountain of the eternal joy for us. That's why he has associated that with beauty. Okay, that uh, he has mentioned in this uh, a thing of beauty. Next is, do we experience things of beauty only for short moment or do they make a lasting impression on us? So it is what? According to the poet, the things of beauty have eternal joy for us. It never dwindle, dwindles into nothingness. In spite of gloomy ruthlessness of life, beautiful memories rejuvenate us. Right? So like this you have to answer. Question number last for today is, what image does the poet use to describe the beautiful bounty of the earth? So the poet uses a visual image to describe an endless fountain of immortal drink. See, see students, here in this question you may be confused between the poem keeping quiet last paragraph, perhaps the earth might teach us, right? So don't get confused, these are the different lines here so the poet uses a visual there uh, in that poem that po that earth is telling us that how to be keep quiet but here we are describing the beauty of the earth okay so the beauty uh, here once again i'll repeat the question answer the poet uses a visual ima imagine sorry image to describe an endless fountain of immortal ring that pours on us beautiful memories as refreshing joy the beautiful elements of nature and inspiring stories of heroes bring those beautiful memories to us so that's all student for the today rest of the uh, extract based questions and uh, phrase where explanation of the phrases in the different poems are there that we will do in next video till then please read the poem and write down the explanation of the of a thing of beauty by john keats as explained in the previous video in your notebooks thank you very much